Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir. I want to thank you for the response. You made a detailed response pertaining to the issue brought up by Honorable and then in terms of the welfare of the members of the Parliament. Mr. Speaker, sir, you clearly hit the nail on the head. The truth of the matter is. It's really beyond you. It's the Minister of Finance, who for many a times has not been able to do what is expected of him by passing the budget. We are guided by the budget. When we ask for these figures, it's not coming from our heads. It is the budget that we pass in this house. And for as long as we pass a budget, and there is no seriousness in the execution of the budget, then it renders the budget useless. Not only that, it's incumbent upon him to review the figures according to inflation. We see him talking about the inflation coming down, but we don't also see the results on the ground in terms of review. So may he, the Minister of Finance, review everything. <laughs> you cannot review things piecemeal. The national budget requires him, and I'm pretty serious about this because I've put my mind to that. A review of the national budget requires him to come here and tell us that I failed to do A, B, C, D because of this and that and that. But he does not respect this house. But when it comes to issues of monies which he then comes to seek condonation to, if that money is available, when it comes to the drugs money for drugs, and maybe the money is available. And this money, through the Auditor General's office, has also been attacked that due diligence is not followed. The Auditor General's office has been very clear on how government is supposed to handle its funds. Okay, Mr. Speaker, I will seek, as you can see, each point is seeking clarity. Okay, I'll stop debating and just say finally, Mr. Speaker, say, it is the same as the devolution funds. The Honorable Minister J.D. Moyo is the only minister who gets devolution funds and is the only minister who determines where he should go. He can take it to Vungu, he can take it to wherever. Devolution funds are for everyone. He cannot decide who to give it to. At times, he give it to Zanu Pfeiffer Lines Council. And for me to also talk about offices which are not there in the information centers, then I then commend that in the next budget, honorable members, there's no point applying for information centers because the structures are not there unless you actually make your cars information center. But with what was given by the speaker, we must also review our demands. You cannot have an information center if you have no structure. So for us, we need to review how we present. Mr. Speaker said, in terms of the medical aspect, you were right to say yes, Christmas does help, and you have reviewed that. How great it is to review other uh, uh, sectors, but the welfare of the honorables is never reviewed. The minister has not come to tell us the review of that. As a result, people will default in payment because our remuneration has not been reviewed. I've not heard him. It goes hand in hand. You cannot be increasing things. And then at the same time, you are not giving people what is also supposed to be done in terms of review. So may he, the Minister of Finance, review everything. <laughs> you cannot review things piecemeal. The national budget requires him, and I'm pretty serious about this because I've put my mind to that. A review of the national budget requires him to come here and so forth. Devolution funds come in once, they must be disbursed at once. Unfortunately, he's not here. It's a matter that I've asked him that why are you disbursing funds without following the constitution in terms of how the structures should be. So he's never here. Like I've said, he behaves like a prime minister. Maybe he's a de facto prime minister. I don't know. But him being a senior minister, he must lead by example. Even the former minister Chombo, one thing you can give to him 
he would come and answer questions despite whatever. May this become the worst cabinet ever, some of them in terms of their performance <laughs> from the Auditor General's office, from the people's view, and from a constitutional point of view, they have let the president down, they have let the people down, and they have let the constitution down, and shame on you.